The King County Sheriff's Office is looking to solve a very cold case, the disappearance of a Burien teenager nearly four decades ago. Here with more about that and two more recent unsolved cases, please welcome Sergeant Ryan Abbott. Thank you for coming in. Hey there. Yeah, thanks for having me. These are some important cases that you guys have been really trying to solve, and now there's a big push on to solve this one. Yeah. The first one. Let's talk about that. The first one is a disappearance of Benjamin Ridley in 1982, and he was 15 when he vanished. Right. He was 15. He lived in Burien uh, with his family, and there was mm -hmm. some kind of some odd family dynamics uh, where he was going back and forth to foster care. And this really strange part about this case is that he wasn't reported missing by anybody in his family until last year, until 2017. Oh. Yeah, so he lived with a foster family and he w was having issues there. He ran away mm -hmm. from the foster home and at that time nobody reported him missing. So once we found out that he's been missing since 1982, uh, the detectives are obviously need some type of information because we don't really have any leads at all in this case. You can see there on the screen we just had a picture of an age progression and he would be 51 now? Yeah, and the age progression is something that we just recently got our hands on and, and it gives a pretty good idea of what uh, Benjamin may look like now. Mm -hmm. And we're just hoping that it's somebody has maybe seen him before or somebody like him and they can call us in with some tips so, to help out the detectives on this one. Are you thinking that he's still in the Seattle area? It's unknown. Uh, we don't know if he's in the Seattle area, if he's, if he's alive, and that's really what we're trying to find out right now. And the big push now with this case being four decades old is that you have this new information with the family coming forward last year. Correct, and, and we owe it to the family to try to get some closure and, and try to find out what happened to Benjamin. Absolutely, okay, case number two is a homicide. Army Sergeant Timothy Hovey was shot and killed in Burien, and you were the patrol sergeant on that case. Yeah, this is a real tragic story. I mean, of course, any shooting is tragic, mm -hmm. but this happened to be uh, an army sergeant who was in Burien at a house party uh, in September of 2016. And then he ended up leaving for some reason. He left the party. And uh, soon after, his friends heard some gunshots and went outside and ended up finding him shot. Mm -hmm. uh, they rushed him to the hospital, but it was too late at that time. And he had died from his, his injuries. Uh, so he was at home, he was on leave, he was based out of um, Lewis McCord, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we just, the detectives don't have any tips on it. We need, we're hoping that somebody knows what happened, and I know that somebody did, yeah. and knows, and uh, you know, the family has put $10,000 forward on a reward in hopes that people are often afraid to come forward in cases like this, mm -hmm. and we're just hoping that, you know, they can leave an anonymous tip with Crime Stoppers, and we can get that information to the detectives so they can follow up on it. Okay, and then case number three is interesting. It happened this July, actually, July 2018. It's a pot shop robbery in White Center. And I have to assume that with all of the pot shops around this area now, you are seeing a lot more robberies of yes. pot shops. Yeah, we've seen a lot of pot shop robberies for a couple of reasons. One, they have marijuana and mm -hmm. people are after it. And then also they have a lot of money on hand. Mm -hmm. So uh, thankfully the pot shops all have really good camera systems. And as you can see on this one, we got some really good photos of the suspect. We just don't know who the suspect is, so we need some help to try to identify who this guy is. Um, and uh, This is him right here we're looking yeah, at on the correct. screen. This is him the day prior he's casing the, the establishment here in White ah, Center. Okay. And uh, But this is exactly, this is him coming in now, actually robbing the store. Interesting. So what kind of safety measures and precautions are pot shops taking now with, I'm assuming, more robberies? Yeah, and I think that's a lot of the reason is because they have uh, the uh, cameras in themselves mm -hmm. in hopes that they've got silent hold up alarm buttons and then they train all their employees to be aware of things to look out for. But a lot of times these just happen when they have a minute to do it. You know, right. this is just a moment and Spur of the moment exactly thing. the person runs in and, and this happens. We have some pictures of the suspect that you're looking for. So if you recognize this man, um, be sure to call King County Sheriff's Department. There's a close-up of him. So somebody's got to have information and somebody has to know who that is. Right. What kind of information is helpful to the police when you guys are looking for tips and for, for leads on these kind of cases? Uh, obviously names are great. Uh, a lot of times we'll just get like a Facebook uh, somebody will send in their Facebook profile picture. Oh. A lot of times we'll get that. Um, we need a name of somebody to follow up on mm -hmm. or even a location where they might live because we can get out in that area and try to look for that person. Uh, so the more information that somebody has, the better. 
And what would you say to people who are afraid to come forward thinking, I just, I don't want to get involved? Yeah, and I think the important thing to remember is you can be anonymous. We don't have to put your name out there and detectives will work one-on-one -on -one with you. And, you know, we have the evidence already, especially with these pictures. Mm -hmm. So we don't need your name in order to uh, prosecute this person. Okay. Um, but we just really need the information and we need the person's we need to be able to figure out who the person is, so we need their name, the suspect's name. So we can solve them. Well, if you think you may have information about any of these three cases, please visit our website for more information about how to reach the King County Sheriff's Office. We'll be right back. A King 5 crossover event, Team Evening and Take 5. This is going to be fun. Why are you already in a tux? Oh, I sleep in this. I bought these on Groupon. <laughs> hey, guys. Kim, bye, guys. Kim. Oh, I'm going to L.A. to cover the red carpet. You want to take these Emmys so you blend in?